The crocodile that has held back the drinkers suddenly leaves. Perhaps there is no future for it in this tiny pool. The mother has made up her mind. This is not the sweet-smelling youngster she came with. But the fawn knows better. The little impala is persistent. Soon the mud will wear off and the mother will again accept her. The crocodile reappears covered in fresh red earth. She thrusts her head into the mud and swings it from side to side. At first, her peculiar behavior is a puzzle. And then, her secret is revealed as her muddy jaws open gently to release the newly hatched babies she has carried down from her nest on the riverbank. This is the reason she has remained in the pool so long. She would never desert her young. She is their only protection. Between predators and the thick mud, there is no chance for the little crocs. And all will die within an hour. Back in the big pool, crocodiles writhe and heave over another carcass. And once again, hippos are amidst the frenzy. There's nothing for them to eat, yet something attracts them here. Clamped tight on the carcass, the croc spins until a piece breaks off. The hippos seem content to gently interrupt the spinning crocs from time to time. But no one knows why they attend these terrible feasts. Nine months, little rain has fallen, and the animals risk death for water. The hippo's calm is disturbed by the violent arrival of the croc's latest victim. For this one, there will be no lucky escape.
The baby hippo is already wedged deep among crocs, close to the impala carcass and the biggest crocs in the pool. The mother then does a strange thing. Rousing herself to investigate the scene, she pushes her baby almost onto the impala and then retreats, leaving her calf between these jaws and the meal. The mother's presence is enough to ensure her safety, though baby seems less certain. But the mother knows they wouldn't dare, and she drifts back into the secure slumbers of the strong. The pool has become so dangerous that most animals prefer to drink from the pits. But a fierce comedy of survival results when so many are desperate for water. Large male baboons commandeer the pits and drink every mouthful of water that seeps in. They can scare off most animals, but sharp horns have the advantage, and the baboon reluctantly gives way. Competition at the pits is so fierce that those that can't cope with a big baboon have to take their chances at the pool. A nursing mother must have water, but she takes a terrible risk to get it. The mother has torn herself free. Baboons can see that another croc has her baby. The croc will lose its prize to the others, unless it leaves the pool. But when it does, a big baboon is waiting. drops the baby, but the brave rescue is too late. The drought continues. It has become the worst in living memory. have left on a final quest for water. But for an increasing crowd of animals, their only chance of salvation lies here. For the plovers, no eggs have survived these cruel and chaotic conditions. Every day, an assembly of desperate animals gathers around the pool.
These baboons, who are seldom peaceable, reach new levels of aggression among themselves. Even mothers with small babies do not escape the brutal bullying. Baboons still dominate the pits, but a female in Yala, driven by thirst, is ready to fight for a drink. Each day now, a few baboons appear with blood on their hands. Their victims are impala fawns. Some are orphans of the drought, others only temporarily lost and alone. Trusting and totally defenseless, they are easy prey for a strong male baboon. Unaware of the fate of her offspring, the mother ranges up and down the pool, calling. A hungry warthog roots around for choice pieces of rotting catfish, while a kudu, heedless of the crocs, drinks the mud. The baboon didn't keep his kill to himself for long. Yet the contest seems to be as much about male dominance as ownership of a carcass. <laughs> Meanwhile, the warthog sees a good opportunity. She's a little slow and no match for an agile baboon. As their pool dies around them, the hippos and crocs lie marooned in the mud like creatures made of clay, half formed and waiting for their creator to complete them. A baboon risks all on a thin crust of mud as she searches for puddles on the surface, while all around her lie more than a hundred crocodiles, indistinguishable from the mud. Mother is brave, but the life and death struggle is between these two. If baboons have nightmares, this is surely one of them. Torn between terror and wanting to help, the mother is unable to rally any support. She has escaped with muddy legs, a sore face, and possibly a haunting memory. Right now, she needs some hands-on grooming, but there is none to be had. Just